this is Kyle Martin Paintings. Hey, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the farm. Today we're going to have a full landscape painting demo. I'm set up right below the barn in the back pasture. We're going to have beautiful golden hour light falling onto the barn and the landscape today. And the first thing that I'm going to do is sketch the scene onto the canvas. I'm going to be drawing with thinned oil paint. I'm going to skip using a pencil in this situation and um, that's because it's the sun is setting. It looks like we got about 45 minutes of light so no time like the present to get the painting going. First thing I'm going to do is start to sketch on the canvas and I can use my brush as a measuring device. I can take a measurement of the height of the barn. I can measure the width of the barn. And if I do that, let's just make a quick mark just to show you what I'm thinking about. So from there to there, that might be it could be represented. So here we have this measurement here. of the the technique that I'm going to use to draw the barn and the scene that I'm going to For those of us who are interested in painting the light and painting the effect of sunlight, we need to be able to understand our value structure, our relationships of dark and light in our paintings. So I just took a little bit of time and created this value sketch. I'm going to mix the colors that I, I see so, and, and I'm check my values according to this grayscale value palette that I have. The light is perfect right now. I don't have much time left, but I am going to mix some of my colors on the palette. The lightest value that I see is a very light yellow color, and it is the eaves on the barn roof. And some of the boards right on the corner of the barn, and those are kind of a glowing yellow color. So I've used some Naples yellow light, mixed with some white, and a little lemon yellow. And that's going to get the party started in that way. 
the next latest failure that I see is some of the weathered sheds that are out there and they're slightly darker than the sky. I'm going to mix a very light value and I'm starting out with Prussian blue mixed with lemon yellow, a little bit of yellow ochre. It has to be darker than that first value that I've mixed. So according to my value palette I'm at about a 20% value here and that's going to work out for that area. The lit up barn is slightly darker. It's about a 30% value. And uh, for the sake of just working quickly today, I'm just going to grab some orange. This orange is darker than the 20% value. That's going to work great. The sky is about the same value. For today, I'm going to come back and I'm going to finish this painting off at a later date. I'm just going to get the major shapes created today. The sky, I'm just going to use some indigo mixed with white. And I need it to be right at about a 30% value. These two values are the same value and they're both darker than those lit up sheds. Some of the shapes on the trees are darker than the sky. So about a 40% value. I'm going to take some permanent rose and I'm just going to mix that with yellow ochre about a 40 maybe 40 percent value take a little bit of that sky color and introduce it and then this is going to be darker than the sky you know i'm just going to right next door use the color that's on my brush and work in a little bit of lemon yellow because because I'm perceiving that as well. Some of the lit up bits of the trees are about a 40% value. So I'm gonna take a little bit of turquoise paint and mix in some yellow ochre to about a 40% value. Some of the foliage that's on the ground, this lit up foliage, the lit up dead weeds that are on the ground that are left over from last summer are about a 20% value. The shadow side of the barn I can just place with a very dark value. I've taken some permanent rose, mixed in a little bit of burnt sienna. The roof of the barn should be about the same value but it's a cooler color it's bluer so i've taken some indigo i just mixed in turquoise and i pulled a little bit of that color that was next door and that's going to work for that area i think i have i also have some uh darks on the ground that are probably about a 70% value. Here I have some cobalt blue, and I just grabbed some cobalt blue off of, out of my uh, stash of paint. And so I'm mixing in a little bit of my turquoise color with that cobalt blue. And uh, I actually need that to be slightly darker than what I have here so that I need to get my values right. Value is the most important thing, so I'm fighting to get my values correct. There we have something that's nice and dark. Finally, a little bit of snow, probably about a 30% value for the snow. So I'm just gonna mix up some permanent rose, a little yellow ochre, maybe some lemon yellow. All right, it's time to fly on this painting. Let's get the paint on the canvas.
Well, we're back on the scene for the second evening of painting. I spent a lot of time drawing the scene onto the canvas and I only worked for a half an hour after I drew the painting onto the canvas and pre-mixed my colors. And so I've got my work cut out for me this afternoon, but I'm out a little bit earlier than yesterday. So I think I'm going to get started. And the way that I'm going to progress the painting at this point is I'm going to add variety into all of my major puzzle pieces or masses that I've already stated. Also, the snow is melting a little bit today. You can see right here in the culvert that we've got some flowing water. The temperature is all right, so I've got high hopes for the painting session this afternoon. Hopefully I can finish this one off. Get started, let's add some variety to the masses and bring some resolve to this painting. So the barn will get broken up. It's just orange right now. It'll get broken up with a few different reds, some warm reds and some cool reds. The same with the sky and the snow on the path that's coming down from the barn.
The sun has set, it's the end of the painting session, and it's too dark to really get a feel for what's going on on the canvas. So I'm going back in the house. I will take a look at this in the studio. I don't think I'll have to come back for another session on this one. I think I've accomplished what I set out to do. I restated all the colors in each of the major puzzle pieces or masses and that added a little bit and that added a sparkle of color and life to the painting. It's a lovely evening. We don't get too many of these uh, beautiful evenings when it's in the 30s in February and so I'm thankful that I had this time to come out and paint and I'm thankful that you joined me for it so thanks so much for being here. Few artists can claim greater influence among the generations that followed than Cezanne. His particular palette and paint handling can be seen in the works of artists from Pablo Picasso to Richard Diebenkorn, Max Ernst to Mark Rothko, Barnett Newman to David Hockney. Cezanne truly is the father of modern art. Painted in 1895 in Aix-en-Provence, Clairière is this densely wooded scene with the systematic progression of chromatic modeling. This is at the autumn of Cézanne's career, the last decade in his life, where he is very liberated, painting in Aix-en-Provence, in these densely wooded forests and mountainscapes, a surrounding that he loved and was inspired by everything that he saw, truly experimenting and pushing boundaries with his new interpretation. Clairière is one of the largest landscapes Cézanne ever painted, measuring over one meter high. The painting is dominated by a group of elongated trees in these arabesque-like shapes scattered around the canvas, whose leaves are depicted in short, staccato-like upward brushstrokes. The overlapping patches of color in varying intensity plays with the viewer's vision, creating this sense of expanding and receding space, while this network of rhythmic, geometrically rendered hue imbues the painting with this wonderful impression of light and atmosphere. Cezanne's working with a palette of primary colors, blues, yellows, ochre tones, greens. This reductive palette allowed Cezanne to achieve an increased level of abstraction. And this radical approach to fractional brush strokes is a direct application of pigment to the canvas that actually liberated him from Impressionism. He's pushing boundaries and doing what has never been done before in this landscape genre. The painting sold in the artist's lifetime to Baron Denise Cochin, and then went through Ambrose Vollard to Emile Staub Terlinden, who acquired the painting in 1923. It stayed with his wife until 1942, when it was sold to the Toledo Museum of Art.